Morning, everyone. Um, look at this ball. Let's say this single ball is a vulnerability, and you can focus all your attention on that ball. On that ball, and our systems will always be vulnerable. So maybe a vulnerability alone, it's not really the end of the world. And let's say now that you have a lot of vulnerabilities all mixed up and a rubber duck doing God knows what in there, then you start to have a problem. As security professionals, our goal is to make sure that we will try to mitigate as many vulnerabilities as possible or put as many security controls in place to try to avoid exploita exploitation. So you can start finding some order, trying to give some order to those vulnerabilities. Maybe you will group them into severities. And that's how you come up with CVSS. CVSS stands for Common Vulnerability Scoring System. And it's defined as a vendor agnostic industry open standard uh, by the book. It's owned and managed by FIRST, an US-based nonprofit organization that started originally with a mission to help security incident response teams across the world. Uh, then it has been adopted by MITRE from the beginning, uh, who runs the CVE program and to associate as well with CVEs as the scoring standard soon became adopted by everyone as well, number one scoring standard. The idea is that it will convey characteristics and severity of software vulnerabilities. Very important, keep these two terms in mind. So really quick about me, I'm from Portugal. Uh, I'm curious, I guess I have to be in this line of work. I consider myself a cybersecurity enthusiast uh, for around 10 years. I've been working for nearly ten, uh, four years at Checkmarks as an application security analyst uh, doing research as well. And I've been practicing Kav Maga for almost 14 years. And I love to read, I love to write, I love to travel. Uh, so enough about me, now let's go to what matters. And we, we're here to talk today about the latest version of CVSS and how it's still not it's better, but it's still not a perfect solution. So why version four? First of all, there wasn't enough granularity before to provide precise severity scores. Um, you could have two distinct vulnerabilities that would end up in the end with the same score, uh, which wasn't really good if you want to distinguish them and be able to prioritize somehow. Then options themselves are limited uh, for instance, you can define in version 3.1 uh, granularity. Uh, you can define some, I mean, uh, what did I, uh, uh, user interaction, sorry. <laughs> I was trying to remember the parameter. You can define user interaction and uh, you can say whether it's required or not, but you couldn't really say whether it was a passive or an active type of interaction, for instance, and parameters still and what they were supposed to describe the characteristics they wanted to bring about the vulnerabilities still was a bit blurry in some cases. For instance, I know what attack complexity means, but do I really know what it means? Uh, and why not? Why not try to improve the previous version if it's not that good? So we came up with this new version of CVSS. It's now running, everyone is starting to adopt it, adopt it gradually. And these were the main changes in terms of groups. Uh, the score is divided by groups. The main group that everyone uses is the base metrics group. But then you have temporal metrics that is now called threat metrics with a few changes. Then supplemental metrics as an entirely, entirely new group. And in terms of uh, changes in a base metrics group, there's a new parameter, attack requirements. And the scope was removed, but it was just uh, in reality moved to the impact part to be divided into vulnerable and subsequent system. Uh, you can now define the confidentiality, integrity, and availability parameters in terms of these two different uh, systems. Uh, 
And then you got uh, the exploit maturity, the only parameter being defined in threat metrics group to define uh, how is a vulnerability currently being exploited in the wild. And uh, then we got the environmental metrics group that allows the consumer to modify the metrics according to his specific uh, environment. Then supplemental metrics to provide still some extrinsic characteristics uh, of the vulnerability and allowing us to cover other sectors that might not be properly covered with the other parameters. So really quick, uh, looking at an example, uh, you can see that this, we're, it, for this vulnerability, it was taken from the official documentation, but a bit, a bit modified for the sake of this exercise. And we're talking about uh, a Juniper router that has the, an R protocol enabled and an attacker could poison the cache and put there a spoof IP entry and it would cause a denial of service to the user of that IP eventually. And then he can also redirect traffic to themselves, cause some sort of man in the middle. And we know that dynamic RP inspection is enabled by default. So looking at this example, I wanted to ask for your input on this. You can see here the, the vector for version 3.1 with some elements highlighted. And what do you think would be the final score in here? If you were to guess, can say just some rough number from one to ten. Seven. Seven eight. Okay, you're just trying to say different, right? Because you you got it right. You're good. Um, yeah, this is the final score that would result from this vector. Uh, now let's look at, bit of, at it in a different perspective to, uh, in terms of version four. So, well, the attack vector is still the same, adjacent uh, because uh, of the protocol we're talking about ARP in an adjacent network. And then we also have attack complexity as high, but this is actually one of the big differences because before, you would still have attack complexity, but as I said, attack complexity is one of the cases where you really don't know what it means. It could mean a lot of things and mean nothing at all. So it was quite shitty to tell the truth. And now you can probably make it a bit less shitty. And so you can say that attack complexity is specifically about having uh, active measures, active protective measures in the system that will somehow delay or slow down the attacker and the attacker will have to circumvent those measures in order to achieve successful exploitation. So now we know that attack complexity means specifically that and other stuff that you can mean by attack complexity are actually part of the attack requirements now. And that's how you get a, a supposedly more precise um, characterization now. And that will count a bit to, should count a bit to lower the score because higher attack complexity. But then also really, really important is that now you can define whether the vulnerable or subsequent system is being impacted. And we now know that in terms of vulnerable system, since we're just creating a spoofed IP entry in the R protocol, we have a low impact on the, uh, on the, um, um, sorry, integrity, on the integrity. You can see there the VI on the vulnerable integrity metric, we have a low impact, but then you can define more precisely that you have a high impact on the confidentiality of the subsequent system because the attacker can read the traffic from the user. And then also in terms of availability, because it, it can cause a denial of service. So also a high impact on the availability. So if you were to guess now, what would you say it's the resulting score? Seven again, six. Seven. 
K9. So you think it's more or less the same or worse or maybe lower? Well, it's lower. And I'm not here to argue if it's correct or not. You would have actually to compare between other vulnerabilities, other different vectors, but well, it is what it is. R right away, you don't know, but you can argue that it's probably a bit too low re regarding the actual impact they're causing or to the users or not, or maybe version 3.1 was a bit too high. Well, it was just for you to understand uh, uh, some of the main differences. And so in general, in a nutshell, what CVSS wanted to bring was, first of all, reinforce, and they emphasize it a lot if you read the documentation that CVSS is not just a base score, you should use all the other metrics groups. Also, finer granularity by adding new elements, you should now have more variations of scores. Uh, then they enhance the impact metrics, as we've seen with the vulnerable and subsequent system. And they wanted to promote accessible information, making it more transparent, uh, being able to tell a better story overall, more clarity and ease of use of the vector. And this is awesome, right? Well, not really. Let's not rush. And let's talk really quick about open source first, uh, and very important element. We all know it's philosophical, it's philanthropic, magical. Everyone is using open source. According to the Census 2 study, 70 to 90% of modern software solutions are using free open source. And we can do a quick test here looking at an NPM package called Gatsby, a popular one for building websites, and you can see all these dependencies popping up, direct or transitive. This would be the final result of all the dependencies you get in this single package, which is quite a lot. And it would be, of course, naive to think that at least you don't have one vulnerability. You don't control all these dependencies. But yeah, one vulnerability is saying to, to few of you, have hundreds, if not thousands, of vulnerabilities in all these dependencies. So is CVSS a solution, or even now version 4 for this? Well, back to the colors. You can group it by severity, as I've shown you, but you can still tell whether the system that is being impacted is really exploitable under its conditions, how the exploitability in practical terms, if the measures that are in place in your system are really going to be circumvented in this vulnerability, if you can do something with it. There are a lot of factors that you need to consider besides severity. But well, if it's CVSS, we're talking about severity. So this often leads us to the idea of risk vulnerability management and these terms are used interchangeably a lot of times. Risk or vulnerability management and even CVSS for risk and vulnerability management. This is of course wrong and it's one of the first problems, one of the main problems of misunderstanding the, the purpose of CVSS. And uh, of course, one thing is severity Another is the risk of exploitation, for instance, and that you could even incorporate into vulnerability management. But again, all different terms. And to explain the next points, to make it clear, I will need to use a lot of memes. So sorry about that if you don't like memes. Um, but it's better to prove my point. So first of all, of course, is misunderstanding the purpose of CVSS. Um, well you can run it other way, but if you want to get the most out of it, you need to, again, understand that CVSS is about severity. Then relying only on CVSS for risk and vulnerability management. Again, CVSS is just for severity, and even worse is if you're relying only on the base group alone. This is something you don't want to be doing. Uh, 
and in practice is much harder than in theory uh, because vulnerabilities are often complex as you know uh, there are a lot of nuances uh, this is some some limitation uh, and the score in version 4 is supposedly more precise and customizable but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily more easy to use also how many vulnerabilities we're talking about because the more vulnerabilities you have the more difficult it will be to try to have a good score and um, well also with all this customization all these other parameters and all it might have introduced more subjectivity and that can also not be not that good also limited information this is a big problem if you don't have enough information you don't really have the context about about the vulnerabilities you can't really know how to properly come up with a score you need the information and okay this is obvious sorry about that but well it should be said still and uh, because it doesn't happen in reality and what about oss libraries that's another problem we have uh, because associated with the lack of information and context we even have lack of context or we can't really implement it when we're attributing a specific score to OSS libraries we will have to resort to the information we have because it will still depend on specific implementations of that library of course and then that takes us a lot of times to score over inflation because if you if that information you're limited to it you are limited to using a general scenario so we need to use the worst case scenario that's actually part of the official guidelines you need to have a worst case scenario but this is also often misinterpreted because worst case doesn't mean you also need to have the worst case for the impact metrics you should use only the most reasonable outcome according to the information you have and uh, you i can give you a really easy example for instance you have some vulnerability which is having passwords exposed in clear text and you can eventually use those passwords you found there is some command line you can use with those credentials to uh, you log in in there then you have remote code execution but the impact is not remote code execution because the vulnerability itself it's only limited to the to the clear text credentials so that would be the impact and not remote code execution and also you get that a lot from bug bounty hunters vulnerability reporters they will over inflate uh, the score on purpose uh, that's the the meme you have there uh, it's usually for financial uh, or reputational rewards because overinflating the score will make the vulnerability look more critical uh, but if you do it on enter.com for instance you will get a penalty for miscalculating the cvss in your in your reputation and uh, of course manual can be a hassle but automated doesn't always work you should uh, you should use both uh we, you really need to use both actually because as consumers you can use automation in environmental metrics and uh, in threat metrics using threat intelligence sources but you as providers of the score you still need to provide the base score in a manual manner to do it properly and also if eventually you want to supply with supplemental metrics as well and then we have like a, a classical problem of time versus quality of course you can waste a lot of time making the score perfect for a vulnerability but can you really do it if you have 300 vulnerabilities for instance of course eventually somewhere in time quality will be sacrificed then of course willingness to do things properly um, because we have consumers we have providers all having to we have to rely on both of them and then it requires focus it requires direction it requires learning obviously to properly use the the score so it's not easy and you do have to rely on both provider and consumer and this is a problem alone because you need to expect that both of them will 
properly use the, the score. Also, another problem, another problem is the neglect, fatigue, and discouragement in the open source. Uh, generally, you find a lot that software maintainers won't really care about vulnerabilities. They don't really care about um, wasting time with vulnerabilities because there's still the idea that it's a, a waste of time. They want to focus on, on coding and improving their, their projects. So uh, how can we try to tackle some of these challenges? Some underlined, of course, because we can't solve everything. We can't really uh, make this perfect, but we can try to get the, the best out of version 4. And again, never too much to stress this out. Severity, as many times as you can have it. CVSS is a tool, not the entire solution. You can use it for risk management, but you can use it for risk management. It's not risk management again. Uh, they, it's still not enough to tackle the, the question of, of risk management. So again, uh, and you should be using uh, fully CVSS capabilities as obvious. The base score should be used properly. As I said earlier, uh, worst case scenario based on the information, but not always. Uh, but then you shouldn't forget the other elements. You have the threats metrics group for uh, knowing whether there's current exploitation activity in the wild. It's very important. Environmental, if you really want to classify it in terms of a particular consumer's environment and supplemental f even for additional characteristics when it makes sense. Uh, so, well, uh, Whoever is supplying information about the vulnerabilities, advisories, they should uh, provide as much information, of course. This is obvious because without context, as we've seen, you can't really build a reliable score. And even open source advisories in the end are relying on CVSS. It's the, the main uh, used standard for classifying severity. Well, we need manual work, automated work, not everything can be automated uh, as we've seen, but you can use automation whenever possible. Um, so this is also an important guideline. Providers will be able to provide with the uh, base metrics and uh, supplemental metrics. Consumers will be able to automate the part of the threat metrics and the environmental metrics. And one way to do it is with asset management database. This is actually a great recommendation for automation. You can have an asset class being defined and all the confidentiality, integrity and availability requirements, how it impacts that specific asset in terms of these elements. And then the exposure, meaning if it's internally or internet facing, also really important for that. Um, and of course, read the fucking source because, well, if you don't, uh, read the source, you won't know how to properly use the vector. It has a lot of great specifications like confidentiality and integrity versus availability and other important stuff that it will explain more in depth and it contains almost everything you need to know about it, of course. And what's next then? Well, providers and consumers need to cooperate, of course, because as we've seen, both are needed. More transparency, more transparency of information, uh, well software maintainers, product owners, uh, product vendors, vulnerability reporters, everyone, bug bounty hunters should disclose as, as many details about the vulnerabilities as possible. There's a really good step towards it. Mitra is now encouraging that CNAs will prov provide as much details as possible, including CVSS because in the past they would just left it for, they would leave it for downstream on mentors like NVD, just leave it empty, NVD would fill in the CVSS, but that doesn't make sense, of course, because CNAs are responsible for reporting the vulnerabilities, creating the advisories. So they should be the ones filling the CVSS, they have the most details. So this should make in the future the available CVSS scores much better associated with the CVs. Then there's the CVSS extensions framework, which 
is uh, also a very important uh, thing to consider, defined as uh, some methods, some formal methods that will allow it to, that are defined in the documentation and will allow it to extend the framework between the, um, above the, the core metrics group and allow it to even classify other sectors. And of course, collaborating with open source communities very important whenever possible. And if you're interested, for instance, you can, you can, and everyone is allowed, of course, to be part of the CVSS special interest group from first, where they are constantly contributing to the improvement of CVSS. And so that's it. I want to invite everyone for to talk with me after the questions in case you are interested to discuss CVSS. I will be glad to do it. And I want to thank everyone for being present, thanking the organization as well, and for the opportunity to talk here today. Thank you.